Ivan Earl was a very hard worker, very quiet. He was very uh, conscious of his, uh, I don't know what it was, it was some illness or something he had that paralyzed one side of his face. Earl had polio as a young man. It killed his brother in the very same year that he had the disease. Some of the people used to call him the angry man because he would never smile. I never bothered to find out or get close enough to know the man. Ivan Durrell was uh, born in 1916 in New York, and his father was uh, Ferdinand Piney Earl. He came from a, a well-to-do family, and he was an artist in uh, early silent films. He was one of the best of the glass painters. Uh, you didn't have to go on location. You would put a piece of glass up in front of, say, a doorway with actors working there, and then you would paint whatever it was around it. The problem was that he had a temper, Ivan Earl's father did, and he alienated just about everybody he worked with. Ivan Earl tells a tragic story about uh, his childhood when his father, who was divorced from his mother, had permission to take the boy on a trip. And uh, it turned out that that trip was not at all what he had promised Earl's mother. He took him to Mexico City, and he said to him on the train, you're going to draw or paint a picture each day. You're going to read 50 pages of a book. And so he had to do that. For three years, he took him to all of the capitals of Europe. He was abused physically, and yet he had to paint alongside of his father every day during this insane uh, episode in his life. And after three years, he escaped and then found his way back to California to his mother. When he finally escaped, he told his mother, I don't ever want to paint again. But then he found he really had a talent for this. And during the Depression, he could make a living doing paintings. And he was a practicing artist before he came to Disney. Ivan Earl has a, a wonderful uh, biography called Horizon Bound on a Bicycle. The title comes from the extraordinary feat riding from Los Angeles to New York when he was about 19 or 20 years old. 42 days, making 42 paintings, a painting a day, and at the completion of that journey, uh, having an exhibition in New York where he sold them. I think with Ivan and his father being such a uh, taskmaster, it also stirred in him a uh, sense of uh, fortitude, one might say. You know, when he was a boy, he was always drawing and always sketching, and I think felt a certain pressure to. And I don't think he ever lost that sense of pressure that, you know, that was a twig that was bent and the tree grew that way. So he always knew who he was as an artist. He was an artist first and foremost. He worked in every medium. He worked in oil and watercolor, gouache. He was a greeting card designer. He had a, a long, successful career designing Christmas cards long before he ever got to Disney. Ivan Earl didn't start to work at Disney until 1951, which is ironically the year his father died. Penniless. He was hired to work as an assistant background painter on The Little House. And the first day there, he noticed about a hundred beautiful little paintings by Mary Blair. And he thought, wow, this is great. This is what I want to do. He did train on a lot of the uh, feature films of the early 50s. Certainly Peter Pan, uh, you can definitely uh, see some Ivan Earl influences. Ivan had done something that Walt loved on uh, Lady and the Tramp. Tell me what you see. Walt wanted Ivan to paint one background where when you saw that small American town, you wanted to live there forever. But if you looked up to the horizon, you saw adventure and you wanted to get out of town shake the dust of this crummy little town off my feet and see the world. He also trained on a couple of shorts uh, that he worked with Ward Kimball. First one was called Melody. The second one is Toot Whistle Plunk Boom, which won the Academy Award for Best Animated Short Subject. And they are even viewed today brilliant, brilliant, brilliant pieces. So he advanced very quickly, and he was considered a talent, an up-and-coming talent. 
Walt liked what Ivan was doing, and I can understand why Walt might have said, oh, wow, that's going to be so different from anything we've ever done before. Ivan Earl was a, a brilliant artist. We were all in, in awe of his talents, and we were all kids. Now, on occasion, we would sneak upstairs during lunch hour to have a look at, at the backgrounds. It was in a wing called The Wing, and that's where all of the gods were, and that's where they created the picture and everything. And we would try and go there when no one would notice and look at all that. On occasion, uh, we would venture into Ivan's office when he wasn't there, you know, because, <laughs> you know, you know. And then in time, uh, we realized, uh, maybe we could even walk in when Ivan was there, as long as we didn't uh, disturb him. And one time, I stood in the doorway a while and watched him paint. And he painted in layers. He would start with a black bush, then he'd paint the next color up, and then he'd add more on top of that and add more on top of that. It was, it was amazing to watch him. Sleeping Beauty gave me the chance to paint a majority of the backgrounds. Down the forest, I had a whole ton of assistance. I had to show them how I paint a bush or a tree. So I made a long panel with about 12 steps from a blob of black to the finished piece. And that was used to make sure everybody would paint the backgrounds the way I do. I remember reading somewhere that Ivan Earl claimed that he either painted or at least touched every single background in the film. He did probably all the keys to Sleeping Beauty, which is phenomenal. Not only did he do a myriad of thumbnails, but he did all the key paintings. And for such elaborate backgrounds, that is an incredible feat. He was very prolific, you know, not only at the studio, but outside of the studio. Post Disney, he painted, must be thousands of paintings. He did lithographs and serographs, beautiful landscapes, trees, hills. He was very inspired by the sort of Northern California countryside of the rolling hills. Beautiful stuff. Perhaps we know him best through this work in the Disney film Sleeping Beauty, but he went on to a long and very successful career. His paintings and prints were always sold out. If an artist's life is about searching and then about attempting to always look over the horizon, he would certainly have that life.